Hello, it's Thea from Theo's Tech Tips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Google Classroom API in Java. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to open up a web browser, and we need to go to the Google Cloud Console. And we're going to go up to Select a Project, and we need to click on New Project, and we're just going to give it a name. And now we need to enable the Google Classroom API. So to do this, we're going to go down to APIs and Services. We're going to click on Enable APIs and Services. We're going to search for Google Classroom, and we're going to click on Enable. And the next thing you need to do is to enable OAuth for our application. So we're going to go to the OAuth consent screen. We're going to click on external. We're going to click on create. We're going to enter our app name. So it's going to be YouTube demo. We're going to select our emails used for support. And we also need to enter our email down here so that we can use it as a developer contact email. And now we're going to click on save and continue. We're going to click on save and continue and we're going to add a user to test with. So you can just enter the email of any Google account that we want to test with. And then we want to click on add and then we're going to click on save and continue. Now we're going to click on back to dashboard. And now that we've enabled OAuth for our app, the next thing you need to do is to get our credentials for our application. So we're going to go to the side and click on credentials. We're going to click on create credentials and click on OAuth client ID. We're going to click on web application and we're going to add an authorized redirect URI and we're going to type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8080 slash callback with a capital C. Now we're going to click on create and now we're going to download our credentials to use for later. So now that we have our OAuth credentials set up, we need to make our application. So to do that, we need to open up our code editor, go to file new project and give it a name. And once we've created our project, we need to set up our dependencies. So we need to go to the palm.xml file and we're going to add a tag called dependencies. The first dependency we need is the Google API client dependency. So we could just add that to our dependencies. And the next dependency we need is the Google OAuth client dependency. So we could just add that in. And the next dependency you need is the Google API services classroom dependency. So we're just going to add that in. And then we're going to click on the refresh button. So now we need to go and open up our main file. And we're going to make two variables that are going to hold our client ID and client secret. So we're just going to go up here and make a private static final string that's called client ID. And we're going to make another private static final string and we're going to call it client secret. So now we need to go into our JSON file and get our client ID and paste it in the client ID variable and our client secret and we're going to paste it in the client secret variable. So now we need to make two more variables. So we're going to go private static final JSON factory, JSON factory, and we're going to set that to JSON factory dot get default instance. And the last variable we need is a variable to hold our scopes for our application. So we're going to go private static final list string scopes, and we're going to set it to collections dot singleton list. And we're going to enter classroom scopes dot classroom courses read only. And now we need to make a new method that triggers the OAuth flow and gets the credentials. So we're going to go private static credential get creds. And we're going to have a net HTTP transport parameter. I'm going to set that to transport. So the first thing you need to do is to make our Google authorization flow. So the first thing you need to do is to make our Google authorization flow. So we're just going to go Google authorization code flow equals new Google authorization code flow dot builder. And we're going to pass in our transport and our JSON factory and our client ID and our client secret and our scopes. And we're going to go dot build. So the next thing you need to do is to make a web server that hosts our Google authorization page. And we can use the Google library to do all of this for us. So you just need to go local server receiver receiver equals new local server receiver dot builder. And we're going to go dot set port 8080 and we're going to go dot build. 
So now we need to return our credential back to the method. So we're just going to go return new authorization code installed app. And we're going to pass in flow and receiver. And we're going to go dot authorize and user. And we're going to add the exception to our method signature. So now that we have the code to get the credentials from Google, we need to add the code to actually get the data from Google Classroom. So we're going to go into our main method. And the first thing we need to do is to make our net HTTP transport. So we need to go net HTTP transport, transport equals Google net HTTP transport dot new trusted transport. And we need to add the exceptions to our method signature. So now we need to make our classroom object that makes the request to Google. So we're going to go classroom service equals new classroom dot builder. And we're going to pass in our transport as well as our JSON factory. And we also need to run the get creds method with our transport. And now we need to go dot set application name. We're going to set that to YouTube classroom demo. And we're going to go dot build. So now we need to get our list of courses from the response. So we're going to go list course response response equals service dot courses dot list. And we're going to go dot set page size. And we're going to set that to 10 so that we can get the first 10 courses from the Google account. So now we're going to make a new list of course called courses. And we're going to set it to service dot courses dot list. And we're going to set it to response dot get courses. So now that we have our list of courses, we just need to loop through them and display their names. So we're just going to go for course course in courses. And we're going to go system dot out dot print line course dot get name. And now we're done. So now we need to test this out. So we're going to go to run and click on run main. And it's going to open a page that's going to ask us to choose a Google account. So we need to choose the same Google account that we entered into the console. And we're going to click on continue. And we're going to click on continue. And then it should list the first 10 courses in the Google account. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and I'll see you next time. Bye!